The Mistress of the Inn by Carlo Goldoni, La Lucandiera, translated by Merle Pearson. The scene is placed in Florence in the Inn of Mirandolina. Act I. The Public Room of the Hotel. The Marquis di Fordipopoli and the Count d'Alba Fiorita. There is quite a distinction between you and me. As far as the inn goes, my money is as good as yours. But if the mistress of the inn shows me certain marks of consideration, it is because I deserve them more than you. For what reason? I am the Marquis di Folipopoli. And I, the Count d'Alba Fiorita. Yes, Count of a purchased county. I purchased my county when you sold your marquisate. Enough. I am who I am, and must be shown respect. Who's wanting in respect? You speak with overmuch boldness. I am in this inn because I love its mistress. All know it, and all are to respect a young woman who pleases my fancy. Oh, that's a good one. You want to keep me from loving Mirandolina. Why do you think I'm in Florence? Why do you think I'm in this particular hotel? Oh, well, you won't accomplish anything at all. I shall not, and you will? I shall, and you will not. I know who I am. Brandolina needs my protection. Brandolina needs money, but not protection. Money? That's not lacking. I spend ten shillings a day, Marquis, and I'm always giving her gifts. But I'm not telling what I do. You don't say anything about it, but everybody knows it. All is not known. Indeed, my dear Marquis, but it is. The waiters are talking about it. A shilling a day. Speaking of waiters, there is this waiter here who's called Fabricius. I don't exactly like that fellow. It seems to me that our hostess looks upon him altogether too favorably. Perhaps she wants to marry him. Wouldn't be a bad thing. The father's been dead for six months. A young girl alone at the head of an inn will find herself embarrassed. For my part, if she should marry, I have promised her one hundred pounds. If she marries, I am her protector. And I shall... I know what I'll do. Come here. As good friends, let's arrange the affair. Let us give her a hundred pounds apiece. What I do, I do secretly, and I don't boast of it. I am who I am. Who's there? Aside. Ruined, poor, and proud. Enter Fabricius. At your service, sir. Sir? Who taught you your manners? Pardon me? To Fabricius. Tell me, how is your mistress? She is very well, your lordship. Is she up yet? Yes, your lordship. Ass. Why, your lordship? Don't lordship me. It's the title I gave the other gentleman, too. There is some distinction between him and me. To Fabricius. Just listen to him. In a low tone to the Count. He speaks the truth. There is a difference. I notice it in the bills. Tell your mistress to come to my room, that I want to speak with her. Yes, your excellency. I didn't make a mistake this time, did I? All right. You have known it three months. You are an insolent fellow. As you wish, Your Excellency. Do you want to see the difference between the Marquis and me? What do you mean? See here. I'm giving you ten shillings. Make him give you the same. To the Count. Thanks, Your Lordship. To the Marquis. Your Excellency. I don't throw away my money as madmen do. Go! To the Count. Your Lordship, heaven bless you. Aside. Your Excellency, played out. Outside of your own country, you don't have to have titles to be esteemed. You have to have money. Exit, Fabricius. You think you can outdo me with your gifts. But you can't do anything of the sort. My rank is worth more than all your money. I don't care what a thing's worth. What I like is something I can spend. You are spending only to break your neck. Marandolina doesn't have any esteem for you at all. Well, do you think that with all that fine nobility of yours, she really esteems you? There has to be money. How money? She wants protection. She wants someone who can do her a favour in a pinch. 
Yes, someone who can lend her in a pinch a hundred pounds. A man must make himself respected. When there's no lack of money, everyone respects you. You don't know what you're talking about. I understand better than you do. Enter the Cavalier di Ripafrata from his room. Friends, what's all this noise about? Are you two quarreling? There's a very fine point in dispute. The Count and I are at an issue on the merit of nobility. I don't deny nobility merit, but I do maintain that there has to be money to satisfy one's caprices. Really, my dear Marquis. Come now, let's talk about something else. How did you come to get into such a quarrel? For the silliest reason in the world. Bravo! The Count always ridicules everything. The Marquis loves our hostess here. I, too, love her. More than he. He claims reciprocal feeling on her part as a tribute to his rank. I hope for it as a recompense for my attentions. Doesn't the question seem ridiculous to you? You must know with what great difficulty I have been protecting her. To the Cavalier. He protects her, and I spend the money. Indeed, one can't dispute about anything that deserves it less. A woman changes you. A woman upsets you. A woman... What queer things one hears nowadays. As far as I'm concerned, there isn't any danger that I'll get into a dispute with anyone about women. I've never loved them. I've never had any use for them. And I've always thought that woman is an unbearable infirmity for man. As far as that goes, Marandolina has extraordinary worth. Up to this point, the Marquis has reason on his side. The mistress of our inn is truly an adorable person. Now, when I love her, you must think there is something fine in her. Indeed, you make me laugh. What can she have that's out of the ordinary, and not common to all other women? She has a noble manner that charms. She is beautiful, she speaks well, she dresses nicely, and she has the best taste imaginable. All these things aren't worth a fig. I have been in this hotel three days, and I don't see anything especially remarkable about her. Watch her, and perhaps you may find some good in her. Nonsense. I have taken a good look at her. She is a woman, just like the others. She isn't like the others. She has something more in her. I, who have been in the society of the first ladies of the land, have never found a woman who knows how to unite, as she does, politeness and a quorum. Great Caesar! I've always been accustomed to be much in the society of women. I know their defects and their weaknesses, and yet with her, in spite of my long courtship and the great hopes I have had, I haven't been able to touch as much as a finger. Art. Exquisite art. Poor simpletons. You believe in her, eh? Now that wouldn't have happened to me. Women? Away with all of them. You have never been in love? No, and I never will be. They have done their best to give me a wife, but I have never wanted one. But you are the only one left of your house. Don't you have to think of the succession? I have thought of it often. But when I consider that to have children, I would have to endure a wife, my desire suddenly vanishes. What are you going to do with your riches? I shall enjoy the little I have with my friends. Fine, Cavalier, fine. We shall enjoy ourselves. And you don't want to give anything at all to women? Absolutely nothing. They certainly don't get anything out of me. See, our hostess. Look at her and see if she isn't adorable. What an idea. For my part, I value a fine hunting dog four times as much as I do her. If you don't esteem her, I do. I'd leave her to you even if she were more beautiful than Venus. Enter Mirandolina. My respects to the gentleman. Which of you has asked for me? I have a request to make of you, but not here. Where do you mean, Your Excellency? In my room. In your room? If you need anything, the waiter will come and serve you. Aside to the cavalier. Oh, what do you say to that modesty? Aside to the marquis. What you call modesty, I'd call forwardness and impertinence. Dear Mirandolina, I shall speak to you in public. I'll not put you to the inconvenience of coming to my room. You see these earrings? Do you like them? Beautiful. They're diamonds. Do you know that? Oh, I recognise them. 
I, too, understand diamonds. They are at your service. Softly, to the Count. My dear friend, you're throwing them away. Why do you want to give me these earrings? A fine present indeed they would make. She has some twice as handsome. These are set in the latest style. I beg you to take them with my love. Aside. What a madman. No, of course not, sir. If you don't take them, you'll displease me. I don't know what to say. It's to my interest to keep on good terms with the patrons of my inn. So, as not to displease you, Count, I'll take them. Aside. Oh, the wretch. To the cavalier. What do you say to this vivacity? Aside. Splendid vivacity? She takes them from you, and without a word of thanks, either. Really, Count, you've made yourself highly esteemed. Out of vanity to give gifts to a woman in public. Marandolina, I must speak to you privately. I am a gentleman. Aside. But penury, he doesn't give anyone presents. If the gentlemen desire nothing further of me, I shall go. Look here, mistress. The linen you gave me isn't to my taste. If you haven't any better, I shall have to provide it myself. Sir, you shall have better. It will be brought up. But it seems to me you might ask with a little politeness. Where I spend my money, I don't need to stand on ceremony. To Mirandolina. Excuse him. He is an implacable woman-hater. Ugh. I don't need her indulgence. Poor women. What have they done? Why thus cruel to us, Sir Cavalier? That's enough. You aren't going to get any deeper in my confidence. Change the linen for me. I shall send my valet for it. Friends, your humble servant. Exit, Cavalier. What a savage man. I have never seen his like. Dear Mirandolina, everyone doesn't appreciate your merits. Indeed, I am so disgusted with his bad behaviour that I shall dismiss him this very moment directly. Yes, do. And if he doesn't want to go, tell me and I'll make him leave immediately. Pray make use of my protection. And whatever money you lose, I'll make good and pay everything. Listen, send away the Marquis too, and I'll pay you for that. Thank you, gentlemen. I have spirit enough to tell a guest that I don't want him. And as regards business, my inn never has a room vacant. Enter Fabricius. To the Count. Your Lordship, there is someone asking for you. Do you know who it is? I think it's a man who sets jewels. Softly to Mirandolina. Mirandolina, discretion. This isn't a proper place for you. Exit. Oh, yes, he has a jewel to show me. Mirandolina, I want to match these earrings. Oh, no, Count. You deserve something good, and I don't care anything about the money. I'm going to see this jewel. Adieu, Mirandolina. Sir Marquis, I must take my leave of you. Exit the Count. Aside. The accursed Count. He bores me to death with that money of his. Indeed, the Count puts himself to too much trouble. People like that have two pence, and they spend them through vanity and vainglory. I know them. I know the way of the world. Ah, I too know the way of the world. They think that women of your kind can be conquered with gifts. Presents are never repugnant to anyone. I should think I was insulting you by trying to put you under obligation with gifts. Oh, certainly the Marquis has never insulted me. And he never will. I sincerely believe you. But wherever I can, I am at your service. I should have to know in what you can help me. In everything. Try me. But, for instance, in what? By Jove, you have a wonderful charm. Many, many thanks, Your Excellency. Ah, I would make an almost unbecoming remark. I would almost call down curses on my title. Why so, sir? Sometimes I wish I were in the Count's position. Perhaps because of his money. Hey, how money? I don't care a rap about it. If I were a ridiculous Count like him... What would you do? The deuce! I would marry you! Exit the Marquis. Oh, what has he said? Marquis Empty Pockets, that fine fellow, wants to marry me. Yes, if you wanted to, you'd find a little difficulty. I'd stand in the way. I like the good things of life, but have no use for the disagreeable. If all who said they wanted me had married me, oh, how many husbands I'd have had. Every one who has come to this inn has fallen in love with me. Every one has made desperate love to me, and many and many a one has offered to marry me on the spot. 
and as to that cavalier who is as rough as a bear why does he treat me so brusquely he's the first guest who's come to my inn who hasn't been delighted to be in my society i don't say that every one has fallen in love at first sight but to despise me so is something that makes me angry he a woman-hater he can't bear the sight of them poor fool probably he hasn't found the one who knows how to handle him but he shall find her he shall and who knows that he hasn't found her i'm going to enter the list with him those who run after me soon bore me nobility has no weight with me i value riches but not nobility my whole delight is in seeing myself served desired and adored that is my weakness as it is the weakness of almost all women i'm not thinking of marrying any one i don't need any one i live honestly and i enjoy my freedom i treat every one well but i'll never fall in love with any one i like to make fun of those exaggerated ardent lovers and i want to use all my skill to conquer strike down and shake to their depths these cruel and hard hearts which are the enemies of us who are the best thing that beautiful mother nature has produced in this world enter fabricius look here mistress what is it the guest who has the middle room finds fault with the linen he says it's commonplace and he doesn't want it i know it i know it he said the same thing to me and i want his commands to be carried out very well come then and lay out the things so that i can take them to him never mind never mind i shall take them to him you wish to take them to him yes i do you must be greatly interested in that guest i'm interested in every one mind your own business aside indeed i'm sure of it our affair won't amount to anything she's just flattering me and nothing will come of it aside poor fool he has aspirations i want to keep him hoping because he has served me faithfully it has always been customary for me to serve strangers you are a little too rough with the guests and you a little too kind i know what i'm doing i don't need advisers very well very well get another waiter why fabricius are you displeased with me do you remember what your father said to us two before he died yes when i decide to marry i shall remember what my father told me but i am sensitive there are certain things i can't endure but what do you think i am a gossip a flirt a fool i'm astonished at you what do i care about guests who come and go if i treat them well i do it for my own interest to keep my inn in good repute i don't need gifts one's enough to court me and this one's not lacking i know who is deserving and i know what's proper and when i want to marry i shall remember my father and he who has served me well can't complain of me i am grateful i recognize merit but i am not appreciated enough fabricius understand me if you can exit mirandolina he's a smart fellow who can understand her one moment it seems that she wants me the next that she doesn't she says that she isn't a flirt but she wants to do as she pleases i don't know what to say we shall see she pleases me i am fond of her and would join my interest to hers throughout my life ah one has to close one's eyes and let some things slide after all guests come and go but i always remain i shall have the best advantage after all exit fabricius enter the cavalier and a servant your lordship i have brought you this letter bring me a cup of chocolate exit the servant the cavalier opens the letter siena first of january seventeen fifty three who's writing horace de Gani, my dear friend the tender friendship which binds me to you makes me anxious to warn you of the necessity of your return to your native land the count mana is dead poor fellow i'm sorry he has left one daughter of marriageable age heiress to thirty thousand pounds all your friends would like such a fortune to fall to you and are busy arranging it they needn't take that trouble from me because i don't want to know anything of it and they know i don't want women about me and this dear friend of mine whom i know better than any one else bores me worst of all tears up the letter what do i care about thirty thousand pounds as long as i'm alone less is enough if i were married a great deal more wouldn't suffice a wife for me rather a thousand times a quartan fever enter the marquis my friend 
Will you let me stay a little while with you? You honor me. At least you and I can talk confidentially. But that ass of a count isn't good enough to be in our society. My dear Marquis, excuse me, but respect others if you want to be respected. You know my character. I am courteous to everyone, but I can't stand that fellow. You can't endure him merely because he is your rival in love? Shame on you, a gentleman of your station in love with an innkeeper? The idea of a man as intelligent as you running after women. My dear cavalier, she has bewitched me. Oh, nonsense, folly. What enchantments has she? Why don't women bewitch me? Their witcheries consist in their personal charms and in their flatteries, and he who stands afar off as I do is in no danger of being unduly influenced. Enough! Sometimes I think so, and then again I don't. What's annoying and disturbing me now is the steward of my country house. Has he done you some mean trick? He hasn't lived up to his word. Enter the servant with the chocolate. To the servant. I don't like it. Get me another right away. At present, there isn't any other in the house, your lordship. You must get it. To the Marquis. If you would be so good as to accept this. The Marquis takes the chocolate and drinks it without ceremony, keeping on talking and drinking at the same time. This overseer of mine, as I told you, drinks. Aside. And I shall go without. He promised to send me by post. Drinks. Ten pounds. Aside. Now he comes with a second thrust. And he has not sent it to me. Drinks. The point is... The point is... Finishes drinking. Here. Gives the glass to the servant. The point is that I'm in great difficulty. And I don't know what to do. A week more, a week less. But you, who are a gentleman, know what it means to keep one's word. I am in difficulties, and by Jove I am utterly powerless. I'm sorry to see you unhappy. Aside. If I knew how to get out of it honorably. It would put you out, would it, to do me the favor for a week? Uh, dear Marquis, if I could, I would help you out willingly. If I had it, I would offer it at once. I'm expecting some, but I don't happen to have any now. You wouldn't have me think you are without money. Shows a sequin and some small change of various denominations. See? Behold all my riches. They don't amount to two sequins. That is a gold sequin. Yes, it's my last. I haven't any more. Lend it to me, and meanwhile I'll see... But then I... What are you afraid of? I'll pay you back. Gives him the sequin. I don't know what to say. Help yourself. Takes the sequin and exit. I have some pressing business, friend. I am bound at present. I'll meet you again at dinner. Fine. The Marquis wanted to extort twenty sequins from me, and then he is contented with one. After all, it doesn't matter much if I do lose a sequin. And if he didn't pay it back, he wouldn't bore me any more. What displeases me most is that he drank my chocolate. What impudence. And then, I am who I am. I am a gentleman. Oh, most polite gentleman. Enter Mirandolina with the linen. Entering with some constraint. May I come in, your lordship? What do you want? She comes forward a little. Look, here is some better linen. Indicates the table. Very well, put it down here. I beg you to be so good as to see if it is to your liking. What kind of stuff is it? Comes forward a little more. The sheets are of fine linen. Fine linen? Yes, sir, ten shillings a yard. Look at it. I didn't want anything so nice as all that. It would have been enough, so long as it was something better than you gave me at first. I made these pieces for people of rank and merit, for those who know how to appreciate them. And indeed, your lordship, I'll let you have them. Seeing it's you, I wouldn't give them to anyone else. Seeing it's you, the usual compliment. Look at the table service. Oh, this Flanders linen. When it's washed, it's very much spoiled. It isn't necessary to soil them on my account. With a gentleman of your quality, I don't consider such little things. I have several of these napkins, and I shall keep them for your lordship. Aside. I can't deny that she's an obliging woman. Aside. Indeed, he has a surly face, which shows that women don't attract him. Give my linen to my valet. I'll put it down some place there. 
It isn't necessary that you put yourself out on my account. Oh, I'm never putting myself out, when I serve gentlemen of such distinguished merit. Well, well, I don't need anything more. Aside. She wants to flatter me. Women. Every one of them is just like this. I'll put it in the alcove. Yes, wherever you please. Oh, this is a hard proposition. I'm afraid I'll accomplish nothing. Goes to put away the linen. Aside. Simpletons hear these fine words. They believe those who say them, and they fall. Returning without the linen. What would you like to order for dinner? I'll eat whatever there is. I would like to know your preference. If you like one thing better than another, speak up. If I wish anything, I'll tell the waiter. But in these matters, men don't have the care and patience we women do. If a little ragout, any sauce would please you. Be so kind as to tell me. Thank you. But by talking this way, you aren't going to succeed in doing with me what you have done with the Count and the Marquis. Why mention the folly of those two gentlemen? They come to my inn to lodge, and then they claim they went to court the mistress of the inn. I have other things to do besides paying attention to their idle talk. I'm trying to act according to my best interests. If I humour them, I do it to keep their custom. And then, to cap the climax when I see how they're taken in, I laugh like a madwoman. Good. Your frankness delights me. Oh, I don't have any other good qualities. But notwithstanding. You know how to pretend with those who pay you attention. I pretend? Heaven help me. Ask those two gentlemen who are infatuated with me if I have ever given them a sign of affection, if I have ever jested with them in such a way that they could with reason be flattered. I don't treat them rudely, because my interests won't allow it, but I don't come far from it. I can't bear the sight of these effeminate men. I abhor them just as I do women who run after men. Do you see? I am not a girl. I am several years old. I am not beautiful, but I have had some good chances. And yet I have never married because I thoroughly value my freedom. Oh, yes. Freedom is a splendid treasure. And so many lose it foolishly. I know very well what I'm about. Enough. Has your lordship a wife? Heaven no, nor children. I'm not fond of women. Good. May you always keep that attitude. Women, sir. But then it isn't just the thing for me to speak ill of them. On the contrary, you are the first I ever heard speak so. I'll say it. We innkeepers see and hear a good deal. And indeed, I pity the men who fear our sex. Aside. She is a queer piece. Pretends she wants to go. With your excellency's permission. You are in a hurry to go? I wouldn't want to be troublesome. Oh, no. You please and amuse me. Do you see, sir? I act just the same with the others. I stay a few minutes. I am rather merry. I make a few little jests to amuse them. And all at once they think, I meant it. And they make desperate love to me. That happens, because you have good manners. With a curtsy. You are too kind, your lordship. And do they fall in love? Just see what weakness, to fall suddenly in love with a woman. That's something I've never been able to comprehend. What splendid strength! What splendid manliness! What frailty! Oh, degenerate human race! That is the way men should think. Sir Cavalier, give me your hand. Why do you want that? Be so kind if you will condescend. See, I'm clean. Here it is. This is the first time I've had the honour of taking the hand of a man who thought truly as a man. Withdraws his hand. Come, enough. Now just see here. If I'd taken the hand of one of those silly gentlemen, he would have thought at once that I was infatuated with him. He would have fainted. I shouldn't allow them the slightest liberty for all the gold in the world. They don't know how to live. What a fine thing it is to express one's thoughts freely, without affection, without hard feelings, and without so much foolishness. Your Excellency, pardon my impertinence. Where I can serve you, command me freely. And I shall have in those services for you, something I have never had in serving any other person in this world. Why have you taken such a great liking to me? Because besides your worth, besides your station in life, I am at least sure that I can converse with you freely, without any suspicion that I am trying to make a bad use of my attentions, and that you look at me as a servant, without bothering me with ridiculous pretensions, with grotesque affections. Aside. I don't understand that extraordinary character of hers. Aside. The satyr will gradually become tamed. Come now. If you have some other things to look after, don't stay on my account. Yes, sir. I'm going to see to the housework. It's my love and my pastime. If you wish anything, I'll send the waiter. Very well. If sometime you should come too, I'd willingly see you. Indeed, I don't go into the guest rooms, but I'll come sometime to yours. To mine? Why? Because, your lordship, you please me very much. I please you. 
you please me because you aren't effeminate, because you aren't one of those who fall in love. Aside. May my nose drop off if he doesn't fall in love before tomorrow. Exit Mirandolina. The Cavalier alone. Ugh, I know what I'm doing. Women, away with them. She would be one of those who can make me love her more than anyone else. That truth, that freedom of speech is a thing too little found. She has something or other out of the ordinary about her, but I wouldn't let myself fall in love with her for that reason. For a little amusement, I'd rather be in her company than anyone else's. But to court her? To lose my freedom? But there's no danger. Fools, fools. Those people who fall in love with women. Exit the Cavalier. Enter Mirandolina and the Marquis. May I come in? May I? The Marquis pulls out of his pocket a fine silk handkerchief, unfolds it, and pretends to wipe his forehead. A fine handkerchief, Marquis. Ah, what do you think of it? Isn't it beautiful? Haven't I good taste? Certainly the best taste. Have you ever seen any so beautiful? It is superb. I have never seen its like. It comes from London. It is beautiful. It pleases me very much. Then I have good taste? I tell you, the Count doesn't know how to spend. He throws his money away, and he never buys a present that's in good taste. The Marquis is a connoisseur. He can distinguish, understand, see, appreciate. The Marquis folds the handkerchief carefully. One must fold this well so as not to spoil it. This sort of thing has to be taken great care of. Here, take it. He gives it to Mirandolina. You want me to put it in your room? No, put it in yours. Why in mine? Because I'm giving it to you. Your lordship, pardon me. No matter. I give it to you. But I don't want it. Don't make me angry. Oh, if that's the case, the Marquis knows my disposition. I don't want to displease anyone. So as not to make you angry, I'll take it. Enter the Count. I was looking for you. I'm here. Aside to Mirandolina. Look here. Show the Count the handkerchief. Shows the handkerchief to the Count. See, Sir Count, the beautiful gift the Marquis has made me. Congratulations. Bravo, Marquis. Oh, it's nothing at all, nothing at all. Mere nothings. Put it back away. I don't want you to mention it. I don't want people to know what I do. Aside. He doesn't want people to know, and yet he makes me show it. His pride vies with his poverty. To Mirandolina. By your leave, I'd like to say a word. Pray speak freely. You'll spoil that handkerchief if you put it in your pocket. Oh, I shall put it in a wrapper, so it won't be soiled. To Mirandolina. See this little jewel set with diamonds? Very beautiful. It's the companion to the earrings I gave you. Certainly it's like them, but it's more beautiful too. Aside. The Count be hanged with his diamonds and his money, and may the deuce take him. To Mirandolina. Now, that you may have an ornament to match, I'm going to give you the jewel. I absolutely won't take it. Don't treat me so discourteously. Oh, I never do that. So as not to displease you, I'll take it. To Marquis. Ah, what do you think of it, Marquis? Isn't it elegant? Of its kind, the handkerchief is in much better taste. Yes, but between kind and kind, there is quite a distance. A fine thing to boast in public of your great outlay. Yes, yes, you give your gifts in secret. Aside. I can well say, and with truth, that where there are two litigants, the third person gets the profit. Count, Count, you'll pay me for this. What are you complaining about? I am who I am, and I won't be treated so. Enough! A handkerchief of that kind. Brandolina, hold it, dear. Handkerchiefs of that kind you don't run across every day. Diamonds you may get, but handkerchiefs of that kind you won't get. Exit, Marquis. Aside. Oh, what a fool. Dear Mirandolina, you aren't displeased with what I do. Not at all, sir. I do it for your sake. I do it in order to bring profit and customers. Besides, I am yours. Yours is my heart, and yours are my riches, and I place them all freely at your disposal. Exit, Count. Mirandolina, alone. With all his riches, with all his gifts, he'll never succeed in making me love him. 
and much less will the marquis with his ridiculous protection if i had to attach myself to one of these two it would certainly be to the one who spends the most money but the one doesn't concern me any more than the other i am bound to make the cavalier de ripafrata fall in love with me and a jewel twice as fine as this wouldn't give me half so much pleasure i'll try i know i haven't skill but i'll try the count and the marquis meanwhile will leave me in peace and i'll have leisure to be in the cavalier society suppose he doesn't yield ah but who can resist a woman when he gives her time to use her art who runs away doesn't have to fear conquest but he who loiters who listens and is pleased must sooner or later fall in spite of himself exit mirandolina end of act one act two cavalier's room with table laid for dinner and chairs the cavalier walks about with a book servant fabricius enters and puts the soup on the table to the servant tell your master if he is ready for dinner that the soup is on the table to fabricius you might just as well tell him he's such a queer fellow that i don't say anything to him unless i have to and yet he isn't so bad of course he can't bear the sight of women but on the other hand he's most agreeable to men aside he can't bear the sight of women poor fool he doesn't know what's good when he sees it exit fabricius your lordship if you please dinner is served the cavalier puts away the book and goes and sits down at the table to the servant this morning dinner seemed to be served much earlier than usual the servant stands behind the cavalier's chair with a napkin under his arm this room has been served first the count de alba fiorita grumbled because he wanted to be served first but the mistress wanted your lordship to be served first i am much obliged for the attentions she shows me she is a very accomplished woman your lordship in all the world i've seen i've never found a politer innkeeper than she turning a little backward she pleases you then eh if it weren't for wronging my master i would like to enter her service as a waiter poor fool what would you want her to do with you gives him the plate and he changes it a woman of that sort i'd like to serve like a little dog goes for a dish by jove she bewitches them all it would be funny if she would bewitch me too cheer up tomorrow i'm going to leghorn let her do her worst for today but you will discover i'm not so weak it takes more than that to overcome my dislike for women the servant entering with the boiled meat and another dish the mistress said that if you didn't like the fowl she would send in a pigeon oh, this is all right what's that you've got the mistress told me that i should tell her whether this sauce suited your lordship for she made it with her own hands this woman is becoming more and more obliging tastes it it is delicious tell her that i like it and i thank her i'll tell her your lordship go tell her at once at once aside what a miracle he sends a compliment to a woman exit servant the cavalier alone it is a delicious sauce i have never tasted a better goes on eating certainly if mirandolina always does this she will always have patrons good table good linen and then i can't deny that she is kind but what i esteem more in her is her frankness oh what a splendid thing is frankness why can't i bear the sight of women because they are false wheedling but that fine frankness ah me enter the servant the mistress thanks you for your kindness in appreciating her humble efforts bravo master of ceremonies bravo now she is making another dish with her hands but i don't know what it is she is making it yes sir give me something to drink yes sir goes to get the liquor well now i'll have to reciprocate generously she is overly polite i'll have to pay double i must treat her well but i must go away soon the servant gives him the liquor tell me is the marquis at the table he has gone out and hasn't been seen indicates he wants plate changed here yes sir enter mirandolina with a plate in her hand may i come in who is here at your service take that plate from her pardon me let me have the honour of putting it on the table with my own hands puts the food on the table that isn't your duty oh sir who am i some fine lady i am only the servant of whoever desires to come to my inn what humility of course it wouldn't be difficult to serve all the tables but i don't do it for certain reasons i don't know whether you catch my meaning or not as far as you are concerned i come without scruples and frankly thank you what dish is that it is a little recu i made with my own hands it will be good if you have made it it must be good oh you are exceedingly kind sir i don't know how to do anything well but i would like to know how to suit so accomplished a gentleman 
aside. Tomorrow to Leghorn. If you have anything to do, don't put yourself out for me. Not at all, sir. The house is well provided with cooks and servants. I would like it if you would see if the dish is to your taste. Gladly, at once. He tastes it. Splendid. Delicious. Oh, what a flavour. I don't know what it is. Oh, I have some special secrets. These hands know how to make some fine things. To the servant. I would like something to drink. You should drink a good wine after that dish. To the servant. Give me some burgundy. Fine. Burgundy is delicious. In my opinion, it is the best wine one can drink with food. The servant puts the bottle on the table with a glass. Your taste is good in everything. Indeed, I have been mistaken few times. And yet you are mistaken this time. In what, sir? In believing that I deserve special favour at your hands. Sighing. Oh, sir, cavalier. What's the matter? Why these sighs? I'll tell you. I'm just as attentive to everyone, and it makes me feel bad when I think that some are ungrateful. I won't be ungrateful. I don't pretend to acquire merit in your eyes, merely by doing my duty. No, no, I understand very well. I'm not so uncouth as you think me. You won't have to complain of me. Turns the wine into the glass. But, sir, I don't understand. Drinks. To your health. Very much obliged. You do me exceeding honour. This wine is delicious. Burgundy is my passion. Offers the wine. It is at your service. Oh, thanks, sir. Have you dined? Yes, your lordship. Don't you want a little glass? I don't deserve these attentions. Indeed, I give it to you willingly. I don't know what to say. I accept your politeness. To the servant. Get a glass. Takes the cavalier's glass. No, no. If I may, I'll take this. I beg you, I have been served from it. I shall drink to your beauty. Laughing, the servant puts the other glass in the saucer. Aside. Ugh, rascal. Pours out the wine. But it is some time since I have eaten. I am afraid it will hurt me. There is no danger. If you could favour me with a small bit of bread. Gladly, here. Gives her a bit of bread. Mirandolina, with the cup in one hand and the bread in the other, makes a pretense of being ill at ease and does not know what to do with the bread and wine. You are ill at ease. Don't you want to sit down? I don't deserve so much, sir. Come, come. We are alone. To the servant. Get her a chair. Aside. My master must be going to die. He has never acted like that before. Goes to get the chair. If the Count and the Marquis should know. Poor me. Why? A hundred times they have wanted me to oblige them by eating or drinking, and I have never wanted to do it. Come now. Sit down. To obey you. Sits down and dips her bread in the wine. Aside to the servant. Listen. Don't tell anyone that the innkeeper is sitting at my table. Don't worry. Aside. This new aspect of his surprises me. To the health of everything which pleases the cavalier. Thank you, my polite hostess. This toast doesn't refer to women. No, why? Because I know you can't bear the sight of them. It is true. I have never been able to. May you always be of that mind. I would not wish. He looks at the servant. What, sir? Listen. He whispers in her ear. I wouldn't want you to make me change my nature. I, sir, how? To the servant. Go away. Is something wanted? Have two eggs cooked for me, and when they are done, bring them in. How do you want them? As you please, but hurry up. I understand. Exit, servant. Mirandolina, you are a polite young woman. Ah, sir, you're making fun of me. Listen, I want to say something true, very true, which will redound to your glory. I will listen gladly. You are the first woman in this world whose society I could endure with pleasure for any length of time. I shall tell you, Sir Cavalier, my worth indeed is little, but at times there exist these kindred natures which meet. The sympathy, this affinity, lives, too, between persons who don't know each other. I, too, feel for you what I have never felt for another. I fear that you wish to destroy my peace of mind. Come, sir, if you are a wise man, act like one. Don't fall into the weaknesses of others. Indeed, if I know it, I can't come here again. Besides, I feel something or other in me which I have never felt before. But I don't want to lose my senses over the men, and much less over one who hates women, and who, perhaps to try me, and then make fun of me, comes with a new style of talk to tempt me. Sir, favour me with a little burgundy. Enough. Pours the wine into a glass. He is on the very point of falling. Here. Gives her the glass with wine. Much obliged. But aren't you going to drink with me? Yes, I shall. Aside. It would be better if I should get drunk. One devil would drive out the other. Turns the wine into his glass. Cavalier. What is it? Clink. She makes her glass clink against his. Here's to good friends. Here's to them. Here's to those who like each other. Sincerely. Clink. 
Here's to you. Enter the Marquis. I'm here too. Whose health is it? What Marquis? Excuse me, friend. I called. Is there no one here? Mirandolina trying to leave. With your permission. To Mirandolina. Stay. To the Marquis. I don't take so much liberty with you. Begging your pardon. We are friends. I thought you were alone. I am glad to see you beside our adorable mistress. Ah, what do you say? Isn't she a masterpiece? Sir, I was here to serve the cavalier. I felt a little ill, and he braced me up with a glass of burgundy. To the cavalier. Is that burgundy? Yes, it is. But the real thing? At least I paid for such. I understand wines. Let me taste it, and I'll tell you whether it's genuine or not. Calls. Look here. Enter the servant with the eggs. A little glass for the Marquis. Not such a little glass, either. Burgundy isn't a cordial. To judge it, one has to drink enough of it. Here are the eggs. About to place them on the table. I don't want anything more. What dish is that? Eggs. I don't want them. The servant takes them away. Marquis, with the permission of the cavalier, taste this little ragout I made with my own hands. Oh, yes. Look here. A chair. The servant brings him a chair, and he puts the glass in the saucer. A fork. Go get him a cover. The servant goes to get it. Sir, I am better. I'm going. Do me the pleasure of staying a little while. But, sir, I have to attend to my business, and then the cavalier. To the cavalier. You don't mind if she stays a little while. What do you want of her? I wish to have you drink a little glass of Cyprian wine, which, as long as you are in the world, you'll never taste its like. I want Mirandolina to taste it too, and give her opinion. To Mirandolina. Come, to please the Marquis, stay. The Marquis will excuse me. You don't want to taste it? Some other time, Your Excellency. Come, stay. To the Cavalier. You bid me. I tell you to stay. Sits. I obey. Aside. She is always putting me under more and more obligations. The Marquis, eating. Oh, what a dish! Oh, what a ragot! Oh, what savour! Oh, what taste! Aside to Mirandolina. The Marquis will be jealous because you are near me. Aside to the Cavalier. It doesn't make the slightest difference to me. You are a man-hater? As you are a woman-hater. These enemies of mine are avenging themselves on me. How, sir? Ah, uh, rogue. You will see very well. Friend, to your health. Drinks the Burgundy. Well, how is it? With your leave. It isn't worth anything at all. You should taste my Cyprian wine. But where is your Cyprian wine? I have it here. I have brought it with me. I want us all to enjoy it. See? Draws out a very small bottle. Judging from what I see, you don't want the wine to go to our heads. That? If you drink it by drops, it is like cordial. Opens the bottle. Look here, the glasses. The servant carries some glasses for the Cyprian wine. Covers the bottle with his hand. They are altogether too large. Haven't you any smaller? To the servant. Bring those used for cordial. I think it would be enough to smell it. Ah, fine. It has a comforting odor. He puts his nose to it. The servant brings in three little glasses in the saucer. The Marquis pours very slowly and does not fill the glasses. He pours out for the Cavalier, Mirandolina, and himself, corking the bottle well. What nectar! What ambrosia! What a distilled manna! Drinking. Aside to Mirandolina. What does this miserable stuff seem like to you? Aside to the Cavalier. Rinsings of the flask. To the Cavalier. Ah, what are you saying? Good. Splendid. Are you pleased with it, Mirandolina? For my part, sir, I cannot dissimulate. I don't like it. I find it bad, and I can't say it's good. I compliment the man who knows how to pretend. But he who can pretend in one thing will know how to pretend in another also. Aside. She rebukes me. I don't see why. Mirandolina, you don't understand this kind of wine. I pity you. Indeed, you appreciated the handkerchief I gave you, and you were pleased with it. But you don't appreciate my Cyprian wine. Finishes drinking. Aside to the Cavalier. You see how he boasts? Aside to Mirandolina. I wouldn't do that. Your boast is in despising women. And yours is conquering all men. All. No. All, yes. 
to the servant who brings them to him on a saucer. Look here. Three clean glasses. I don't care for any more. No, no. Don't be afraid. I'm not doing this for you. Pours the Cyprian wine into three little glasses. My good man, with the permission of your master, go to the Count d'Alba Fiorita and tell him from me, in a loud tone of voice so that everyone can hear, that I ask him to taste a little of my Cyprian wine. At your service. Aside. He certainly won't get drunk on it. Exit servant. A Marquis, you are exceedingly generous. I? Ask Mirandolina. Oh, certainly. To Mirandolina. Has the cavalier seen the handkerchief? No, he hasn't. To the cavalier. You should see it. Putting back the bottle with a little wine left. This little bit of balm I'll keep for the evening. Take care that it doesn't make you ill, Marquis. To Mirandolina. Ah, that doesn't. But do you know what does? What? Your beautiful eyes. Really? My dear cavalier, I'm desperately in love with her. You displease me. You have never had any experience in loving women. Oh, if you had, you would pity me. Yes, yes, I pity you. And I am as jealous as a beast. I let her stand near you because I know what you are. With any other man, I wouldn't allow it for a million pounds. Aside. This fellow begins to bore me. Enter the servant with a bottle in a saucer. To the Marquis. The Count thanks your excellency and sends you a bottle of canary. Oh, ho! He would like to compare his canary with my cypress? Let's see. Poor fool! It is miserable stuff. I know it by the smell. He gets up and takes the bottle in his hand. To the Marquis. You taste it first. I don't want to taste it at all. This is an impertinence that the Count has done me just like so many others. He wants to outdo me, to make me angry, to make me do some little bit of folly. But I swear by heaven, I shall do one such act which will do for a hundred. Marandolina, if you don't turn him out, something will happen. Some fine things will happen. He is a hot-headed fellow. I am who I am, and I don't want to have to endure like insults. Exit the Marquis, taking away the bottle. The poor Marquis is a madman. Fearing lest his anger should ever make him ill, he's carried away the bottle to return it. He is a madman, I tell you, and you have made him such. I am one of those who makes men mad. Yes, indeed you are. Sir, with your permission. Rises. Stay. Going. Pardon me, I don't make anyone mad. Listen. Gets up, but remains at the table. Pardon me. Stay, I tell you. Haughtily turning around. What do you want of me? Nothing. Drink another glass of burgundy. Come now, sir. Quick, quick, for I must be going. Sit down. Standing up. Standing up. Gives her the glass tenderly. Here. I'll give a toast, and then I must go immediately. A toast my grandmother taught me. Live thou, Bacchus. Live thou, love. Ye do both us cheer, console. One doth pass through throat to goal. Other runs from eye to soul. Drink I wine, those eyes of mine. Them I use, as thou dost thine. Exit Mirandolina. Bravo! Come here. Ah, oh, rogue. She has fled. She has escaped and left me. A hundred devils to torture me. Do you wish the fruit to be served? Go to the devil. Exit the servant. The cavalier, alone. Drink I wine. Those eyes of mine, them I use as thou dost. What mysterious sort of toast is that? Ah, wretch, I know you. You want to strike me down, to assassinate me. But she does it with such grace. She knows well how to ingratiate herself. Devil, devil. You would make me endure the sight of her. No, I will go to Leghorn. I wouldn't want ever to meet her again. She'll never cross my path again. Cursed women, I swear, I'll never go where there are women any more. When I can, I'll insult women with the greatest pleasure in the world. Nevertheless, I haven't been able to insult Mirandolina. She has conquered me with civility, so that I find myself almost obliged to love her. But she is a woman. I don't want to trust myself. I must go away. I must go away tomorrow. But if I wait till tomorrow... If I come and sleep in the house this evening, who can assure me Mirandolina won't finish ruining me? Yes, I must act resolutely, 
like a man. Re-enter the servant. Sir. What do you want? The Marquis is in the public room and awaits you because he desires to speak to you. What does that fool want? He can't get money out of me. Let him wait, and when he's tired of waiting, he will go away. Go to the waiter of the inn and tell him to bring my bill at once. On the point of departure. Yes, sir. Listen. Have everything packed in two hours. You want to leave, perhaps? Yes. Bring me my sword and my hat, without letting the Marquis see. But if he sees me pack the trunks? Uh, tell him what you will. Understand? Aside. Oh, how much it pains me to leave Mirandolina. Exit servant. The cavalier alone. And yet it is true. I feel in leaving here a new uneasiness, which I have never experienced before. It is so much worse for me to remain here. I must go away all the sooner. Yes, women, I shall always speak ill of you. Yes, you have always done evil to us, even when you wish to do good. Enter Fabricius. Is it true, sir, that you wish your bill? Yes, have you made it out yet? The mistress is doing it now. She makes out the bills. Ah, always. Even when her father was living, she writes and knows how to keep accounts better than any clerk. Aside. What a singular woman she is. But you wish to go away at once? Yes, my affairs are pressing. I beg you remember the waiter. Bring me the bill, and I know what I ought to do. Do you wish your account to be brought here? I want it here. I shan't go to the public room for the present. You do well. That bore of a marquis is in the public room. Good soul. He is in love with the innkeeper, but that's all the satisfaction he'll get. Mirandolina is to be my wife. The bill. Yes, sir. At once. Exit Fabricius. The cavalier alone. Everyone is smitten with Mirandolina. It is no wonder that I have begun to feel myself affected. But I will go away. I will overcome this strange power. Whom do I see? Mirandolina. What does she want of me? She has a sheet of paper in her hand. She's bringing me my bill. What shall I do? I must endure this last attack. I'll be gone from here in two hours. Enter Mirandolina with a sheet of paper in her hand. Sir. What is it, Mirandolina? Mirandolina, standing in the background. Pardon me. Come here. You asked for your bill. I have brought it. Give it here. Here it is. She wipes her eyes with her apron in giving the bill. What is the matter? Are you crying? No, sir. The smoke got into my eyes. Smoke in your eyes? Oh, well. How much does my bill come to? Reads. Ten shillings. For such generous hospitality for four days? Only ten shillings? That is the bill. And the two special dishes you gave me this morning? They are not in the bill? Pardon me. Whatever I give, I don't put in the bill. You make me a present of them? Pardon the liberty. Accept them as an act of... She covers her face, making a pretense of crying. What is the matter? I don't know whether it is the smoke, or some sort of running of the eyes. I would not have had you suffer cooking those two delicious dishes for me. If it were that, I would suffer, gladly. Pretending to be trying to keep from crying. Aside. Oh, if I don't get away pretty soon. Come now. There's three pounds. Enjoy them for love of me, and have pity on me. He becomes confused. Mirandolina, without speaking, falls as though she has fainted on a chair. Mirandolina. Alas, Mirandolina. She's fainted. Can it be that she is in love with me? But so soon. And why not? Am I not in love with her? Dear Mirandolina. Dear? I say dear to a woman? But she fainted on my account. Oh, how beautiful you are. If I only had something to make her come to, I'm not so much in the society of women. I haven't got smelling salts or vials. Who's there? There's no one. Quick, I'll go. Poor little girl. Blessings on you. Goes out. Now then, he has given in at last. The weapons we use to conquer men are many. But when they are obstinate, the final blow, that's sure to win them, is fainting. He's coming back. He's coming back. She lies as before. The cavalier returns with a jug of water. Look, look, she hasn't come to yet. Oh, certainly she loves me. Sprinkling water in her face ought to revive her. He sprinkles the water, and she moves. Courage, courage. I'm here, dear. I'll never leave you now. Enter the servant with the sword and hat. Here are your sword and your hat. Go away. The trunks. Go away, curse you. Mirandolina. Go before I split your head. 
He threatens with the jug. The servant goes. She hasn't come to yet. Her forehead perspires. Come, dear Mirandolina. Take courage. Open your eyes. Speak to me freely. Enter the Marquis and the Count. Cavalier. Friend. Aside. Curses. Mirandolina. Mirandolina gets up. Alas. I have made her recover. I rejoice, Sir Cavalier. Fine for the gentleman who can't stand the sight of women. What impertinence. Have you given in? Go to the devil, all of you. He throws the jug down in the direction of the Count and the Marquis and breaks it. Exit the Cavalier in a rage. The Cavalier has become a madman. Exit the Count. I want satisfaction for this insult. Exit the Marquis. My task is done. His heart is on fire, in flames, in ashes. All I have to do is to complete my victory, to make my triumph public to the discomfiture of presumptuous men and to the honour of our sex. Exit Mirandolina. End of Act Two. Act Three of The Mistress of the Inn. Scene One. Mirandolina's room with a little table and linen ready to iron. Now the time's passed for amusing myself. I want to look after my business now. First I want to iron this linen, for it is dry. Oh, Fabricius. Madam. Do me a favour. Get me the hot flat iron. Yes, ma'am. With serious mien on the point of leaving. Excuse me if I bother you. Offering to go. Not at all, madam. While I eat your bread, I am under obligations to serve you. Wait. Listen, you are not bound to help me in these things, but I know that you do it gladly for me, and I... Enough. I won't say anything more. I would move heaven and earth for you, but I see that everything is thrown away. Why thrown away? Perhaps I am ungrateful. You don't pay any attention to poor men. The nobility pleases you overly much. Ah, poor fool, if I could tell you everything. Go, go, get me the iron. But I have seen it with these eyes of mine. Go, go, less idle talk. Get me the iron. Going. I'm going, I'm going. I will serve you for but little reward. Pretending to speak to herself, but really so that she may be heard. With these men, the better one likes them, the worst one treats them. Tenderly turning around. What did you say? Come, are you going to get me that iron? Yes, I'll get it. Aside. I don't understand at all. Now she lifts me up, now she throws me down. I don't understand it at all. Exit Fabricius. Mirandolina alone. Poor fool. He can't help serving me in spite of himself. I almost burst out laughing to think of making men act according to my will. And that cavalier who is such a woman-hater. Now, if I wished, I could make him do any little bit of folly I wanted to. A servant, entering. Mirandolina. What is it, friend? My master sends you his greetings. He told me how you are. Tell him I am very well. He says you should drink a little of this cordial which will make you feel ever so much better. He gives her a little gold flask. This flask is gold. Yes, ma'am, gold. I know it positively. Why didn't he give me the cordial when that terrible faint came on? He didn't have this flask then. And how did he get it now? Listen, in confidence. He sent me to call a goldsmith, and he bought it and paid six pounds for it, and then he sent me to an apothecary to buy the spirits. <laughs> You're laughing. I'm laughing because he sends me the medicine after I have recovered from my illness. It will be good for another time. Come, I'll drink a little now for a preventive. Drinks. Here. She offers to give him the flask. Thank him. Oh, the flask is yours. How mine? It's this way. My master bought it purposely for you. Purposely for me? For you. But hush. Take him his flask and tell him that I thank him. Ah, come. I tell you to take it to him, that I don't want it. You want to give him this insult? Less idle talk. Do your duty. Take it. I don't need anything more said to me. I'll carry it to him. Aside. What a woman. Refuses six pounds. I have never found one like her, and it would be some trouble to do so. Exit servant. Mirandolina, alone. Oh, he's cooked, done brown, twice baked. But just as what I've done with him, I've not done for my own interest. I want him to confess the power of women, without being able to say that they are self-seeking and venial. Fabricius entering, self-contained with iron in his hand. Here's your iron. Is it good and hot? Yes, madam, it is. What news is there? This cavalier sends embassies. He sends gifts. His servant told me so. Yes, sir. He sent me a little gold flask, and I sent it back to him. You sent it back? That, Fabricius. That he may not say. Now, don't let us talk any more about it. Dear Mirandolina, pardon me. Go away. Let me iron. I'm not hindering you. Go. Get another iron ready, and when it's hot, bring it to me. 
Yes, I'll go. Believe me when I say... Don't talk any more. You make me angry. I'll keep still. Aside. She is a queer little body, but I am fond of her. Exit Fabricius. Mirandolina, alone. This is too fine. I'm acquiring merit in the eyes of Fabricius by having refused the cavalier's gold flask. That is to say, I know how to live, to act, to profit by everything, with good grace, nicely and freely. As regards tact, I don't need to say I wrong my sex. Goes on ironing. Enter the cavalier. The cavalier to himself in the background. See here. I didn't want to come here, but the devil dragged me. Aside. See him? See him? She looks out of the corner of her eyes and irons. Mirandolina. Oh, Sir Cavalier, your most humble servant. Mirandolina, ironing. How are you? Very well, thank you. Ironing without looking at him. I have reason to complain of you. Why, sir? Looking at him a little. Because you refused a little flask I sent you. What did you want me to do with it? Ironing. Make use of it at need. Thank heavens I'm not subject to fainting spells. What happened today never happened to me before. Dear Mirandolina, I hope I wasn't the occasion of that disastrous accident. Yes, I'm afraid you were precisely the cause of it. I? Why? You made me drink that cursed burgundy and it made me ill. Ironing angrily. What? Is it possible? It is certainly true. I'll never go into your room again. I understand. You will never come into my room again. I understand the mystery. Yes, I understand it. But come there, and you will consider yourself happy. This iron isn't very hot. Oh, Fabricius! If the other iron is hot, bring it in. Do me this favor. Take this flask. Indeed, sir, I'm not in the habit of taking gifts. Ironing with displeasure. Yet you have taken them from the Count Alba Fiorita. I had to in order not to displease him. And yet you would wrong me and displease me? What does it matter to one whom all womankind displeases? Indeed, he can't bear the sight of women. Oh, Mirandolina, I can't say that now. Cavalier, has the moon affected your senses? My change is not dependent on the moon. I'm not a lunatic. That is a miracle caused by your beauty and your grace. Ha <laughs> Laughs loudly and irons. You are laughing? Don't you want me to laugh? You make fun of me and you don't want me to laugh. Ah, you little rogue. I make fun of you, eh? Come, take this bottle. Thanks, thanks. Take it or you'll make me angry. Fabricius, the iron. Will you take it or won't you take it? Fury, fury! Takes the flask and with displeasure throws it into the clothes basket. You throw it away in that fashion? Fabricius! Enter Fabricius with iron. Seeing the cavalier, he becomes jealous. I am here. Takes the iron. Is the iron good and hot? Yes, madam. What is the matter that you seem so disturbed? Nothing at all, mistress, nothing at all. You are ill. Give me the other iron, if you want me to put it on the fire. Indeed, I fear you are ill. Come, give him the iron, and let him go. I am fond of him, do you know that? He is my trusty waiter. To himself. I can stand no more. Gives the iron to Fabricius. Here, my dear, heat it. Mistress. Come, come quick. She turns him out. Aside. What way of acting is this? I feel I can't stand any more. Exit Fabricius. Fine manners, fine manners. Madam to your waiter. As for that, what would you have me say? It seems as if you were smitten with him. I in love with a waiter. You make fine compliments, sir. I'm not of such bad taste. When I wish to fall in love, I won't throw away my time so unprofitably. Ironing. You deserve the love of a king. The king of spades or the king of diamonds. Let us talk seriously and lay jesting aside. You talk and I'll listen. Can't you stop ironing for a while? Oh, pardon me. I must get this linen carefully prepared for tomorrow. Then this linen concerns you more than I do? Surely. And you even repeat it? Of course, because I have to use this linen, but I can't count on you in any way. On the contrary. You may dispose of me freely. Oh, you cannot bear the sight of women. Don't torment me any more. You have been avenged enough. I esteem you. I esteem women who are of your stamp, if there are any. I esteem you, I love you, and I ask you to pity me. Yes, sir, we'll tell them all about it. Ironing hastily, let's fall a cuff. The cavalier picks up the cuff and gives it to her. Believe me. Don't put yourself out. You deserve to be served. <laughs> are you laughing? I'm laughing because you are making fun of me. Mirandolina, I can't stand no more. Do you feel ill? Yes, I feel faint. Gives his flask to him with displeasure. 
Take your cordial. Don't treat me so harshly. Believe me, I love you. I swear it. Tries to take her hand, and she burns him with the iron. Ouch! Excuse me, I didn't do it purposely. Patience. That is nothing. You have given me a far worse burn. Where, sir? In my heart. Calls laughingly. Fabricius? For mercy's sakes, don't call that fellow. But I need another iron. Wait. But no, I shall call my servant. Oh, Fabricius! I swear by heaven that if that fellow comes, I'll split his head. Oh, this is a fine state of affairs. I can't make use of my own servants. Call someone else. I can't stand him. It seems to me you go a little too far, Cavalier. She goes away from the table with the iron in her hand. Excuse me. I am beside myself. I'll go into the kitchen and you'll be satisfied then. No, dear. Stay. Walking about. This is a queer thing. Walks after her. Excuse me. I can't call whom I wish. I confess I am jealous of him. Aside. He comes after me just like a little dog. This is the first time that I have experienced what love is. Walking to and fro. No one ever ordered me about so. I had no intent of commanding you. I beg you. He follows her, turning haughtily. What do you want of me? Love, compassion, pity. A man who this morning couldn't bear the sight of women now asks for love and pity. Aside. I won't pay any attention to him. It cannot be. I don't believe him. Burst, explode, and learn not to despise women. Exit Mirandolina. The cavalier, alone. Oh, cursed be the moment I first saw her. I've fallen into the snare, and there isn't any help now. Enter the Marquis. Sir Cavalier, you have insulted me. Excuse me, it was an accident. I'm astonished at you. After all, the jug didn't hit you. A little drop of water stained my clothing. I repeat, excuse me. That is an impertinence. I did nothing purposely. For the third time, I say excuse me. I wish satisfaction. If you don't want to excuse me, if you want satisfaction, I am here. I'm not afraid of you. I fear this stain won't go away. That is what makes me furious. When a gentleman asks to be excused, what more do you want? If you didn't do it out of malice, I will let you off. I tell you that I am capable of giving you any kind of satisfaction. Come, let's say no more about it. Low-born fellow. Oh, that's fine. My anger is all gone, and you tried to make it come again. A fine humor you found me in just now. I pardon you. I know what trouble you are having. I don't meddle with your affairs. How you have fallen, sir enemy of women. I? How? Yes, you are in love. I am, am I? Go to the devil. What's the use trying to hide it? Let me alone, or I swear to heaven I'll make you sorry for this. Exit the cavalier, the marquis, alone. He is in love. He is ashamed of himself. And he doesn't want anyone to know it. But perhaps he doesn't want me to know it because he is afraid of me. He fears to declare himself my rival. I am very much displeased on account of this spot. If I only knew how to take it away. These women usually have some sort of powder to take away stains. Looks on the table and in the basket. This beautiful flask. Is it gold or brass? It must be brass. If it were gold, it would not be left here. If there were some Regina water in it, it would be good to take away this stain. Opens it, smells it, and tastes it. It is cordial. At any rate, it will do that much good. I want to try it. Puts it in his pocket. Enter the cavalier's servant, looking on the table. Where the deuce is that flask? What are you looking for, my good man? I'm looking for a flask of cordial. Mirandolina wants it. She says she left it here, but can't find it. Was it a little brass flask? No, sir. It was gold. Gold? Yes, it was gold. I saw it bought for six pounds. Aside. Oh, poor me. But how did she come to leave a gold flask around? She left it here, but I can't find it. And yet it seems impossible that it should be gold. It was gold, I tell you. Perhaps you have seen it, Your Excellency? I haven't seen anything. That's enough. I'll tell her I can't find it. It's her loss. She ought to have put it in her pocket. Exit the servant. The Marquis alone. Oh, the poor Marquis de Forlipopoli. How must I act in so important a case? If Morandolina ever finds out I have it, my dignity is in danger. I am a gentleman. I must pay her for it. But I haven't got the money. Enter the Count. 
what do you say marquis of this fine bit of news what's happened the savage cavalier the scorner of women is in love with mirandolina i'm glad of it i want him to recognize in spite of himself the merit of this woman and to see that i'm not smitten with one who does not deserve my love and may he suffer and burst for his impertinence but suppose mirandolina reciprocates his affections that can't be she wouldn't torture me so i am who i am she knows what i have done for her i have done more for her than you but everything was thrown away mirandolina lured on the cavalier de ripafrata she bestowed attentions on him she never did on you or me but it is evident that with women the more you do for them the less you merit they adore him who makes fun of them and they run after him who disdains them if that were true but it can't be why can't it would you want to compare the cavalier with me haven't you seen her yourself seated at his table has she ever treated us with such confidence for him specially fine linen his table is the first to be served with her own hands she makes dishes for him the servants see everything and they talk fabricius groans with jealousy and then that swooning real or feigned isn't it a manifest sign of love how she made him savoury ragot but for me tough beef and thin rice broth yes it is true this is an insult to my rank and to my station in life and i who have spent so much on her and i who gave her gifts continually i even gave her a drink of that delicious cyprian wine of mine the cavalier couldn't have done for her the smallest part of what we have done be sure that he too has lavished gifts upon her so what did he give her a gold bottle with cordial aside alas how do you know his servant told mine aside worse and worse i'm getting into trouble with the cavalier i see that she is ungrateful i wish to leave her absolutely i wish to leave this unworthy inn before an hour is up yes yes you do well go and you who are a gentleman of such honour ought to go with me but where ought we to go i shall find you a stopping place leave that to me this inn it will be for instance we will go into a house of one of my fellow townsmen we won't spend anything enough you are such a good friend of mine that i can't say no let us go and take vengeance on this ungrateful woman yes let us go aside how about the flask then i am a gentleman i can't do a base action don't hesitate marquis let's get away from here do me this favour and then i'm your humble servant wherever i can serve you i shall tell you in confidence don't tell anyone my steward has delayed my remittance for some time you perhaps have a bill to settle yes six pounds six pounds it must be two months that you have not paid it is true i owe her six pounds i can't go without paying her if you would do me the favour draws out his purse gladly here are six pounds wait now that i remember it is six pounds ten aside i want to return the cavalier his ten shillings six pounds or more it is the same to me here i shall return it as soon as possible help yourself as far as you please i don't lack for money and to get even with her i would spend two thousand pounds indeed she is ungrateful i spent money on her and she treats me so i want to ruin her in it's thus i'll get even with her after that the cavalier who has concealed his true motives in order to betray me will have to give me satisfaction of a different sort exit the count act three scene two a room with three doors mirandolina alone ah poor me i'm in a horrid fix if the cavalier comes to me a pretty mess he is confoundedly furious i hope the devil doesn't tempt him to come here i must close this door she locks the door through which she came now i almost begin to repent of what i have done it is true that i have been very much amused at having such a proud fellow such a despiser of women run so madly after me but now that the satyr is furious i see my honour in danger 
and my life itself. I must make some coup d'etat. I am alone. I need someone to look out for my interests. It cannot be any other than that good man Fabricius, who, in case of need, can help me. I shall promise to marry him. But promises, more promises, he will grow tired of believing me. It would be almost better if I married him. After all, with such a marriage, I could hope to protect my honour, without detriment to my freedom. The cavalier knocks at the door from within. Someone is knocking at the door. Whoever can it be? She approaches it. From within. Mirandolina. Here he is again. Mirandolina, open for me. Aside. Open? I'm not such a simpleton. What do you wish, sir? Open the door. Do me the favour of going to your room and waiting for me until I am disengaged. Why don't you want to open it? Some guests have come. Do me this favour and wait for me. I'll be with you presently. Leaves the door. I'll go, but if you don't come, I pity you. Aside. If you don't come, I pity you. I pity myself if I should go. The matter is becoming worse. I would remedy matters if I could. Has he gone? Looks through the keyhole. Yes, yes, he's gone. But I'm not going to him. At another door. Oh, Fabricius. Oh, it would be fine now if Fabricius should be avenged on me and not intend to— Oh, there is no danger. I have certain manners, certain alluring ways, which make men give in, even if they are of stone. Calls at the other door. Fabricius? You called? Come here. I have something confidential to tell you. I am here. You know that the cavalier, Ripperotta, has shown that he is in love with me. Hmm. I noticed it. Yes, you noticed it. I, in truth, was never aware of it. Poor simpleton. You never knew it? You didn't see the grimaces he made when you were ironing? That he was jealous of me? I take things indifferently when I act without malice. It is enough. Just now he said certain words which indeed made me blush. You see, he dares to say this because you are a woman alone, without father, without mother, without anyone. If you were married, it would not be so. Come now, I understand perfectly what you say. I have thought of marrying. Remember your father. Yes, I shall remember him. The cavalier knocks at the door as before. To Fabricius. Someone is knocking. In a loud voice toward the door. Who is that knocking? From within. Open it. To Fabricius. The cavalier. What do you want? Goes to open it. Wait until I go. Of what are you afraid? Dear Fabricius, I don't know. I'm afraid for myself. Exit, Mirandolina. Don't worry. I'll defend you. From within. Open. I swear by heaven. What do you want, sir? What noise is this? People don't act so in a respectable inn. Open that door. He tries to break open the door. The deuce! I would not want to go too far. Help! Who is there? Isn't there anyone? Enter the Marquis and the Count from the center door. At the door. What is that? At the door. What noise is that? Aside so that the Cavalier shouldn't hear him. Sirs, I beg you. The Cavalier de Ripafrata wants to smash this door. From within. Open it, or I'll throw it down. To the Count. Has he gone mad? Let us go. To Fabricius. Open it. I want to speak with him. I shall open it, but I beg you. Don't hesitate. We are here. Aside. If I see the least little thing, I'll beat a retreat. Fabricius opens the door, and the cavalier enters. I swear to heaven. Where is she? For whom are you looking, sir? Where is Mirandolina? I don't know. Aside. He is angry with Mirandolina. It is nothing at all. Base woman. I shall find her. He walks about and discovers the count and then the marquis. To the cavalier. With whom are you angry? Cavalier, we are friends. Aside. Alas, I wouldn't want this weakness of mine to be known for all the gold in the world. What do you want, sir, of the mistress? I am not responsible to you. When I give orders, I want them obeyed. I pay my money for this, and I swear to heaven that you will have to settle with me. Your Excellency pays his money to be obeyed in legitimate and honest things, but you can't pretend, pardon me, that an honest woman— What are you saying? Who are you? I know what I ordered from her. You ordered her to come to your room. Come, come, knave, before I break your skull. I am astonished at you. To Fabricius. Hush. To Fabricius. Go away from here. To Fabricius. Go away from here. I tell you, sirs. Away. Away. They turn him out. Aside. By Jove, I want to do something reckless. Exit Fabricius. Aside. Worthless woman. To make me wait in my room. Aside to the Count. What the deuce is the matter with him? Aside to the Marquis. Don't you see? He's in love with Mirandolina. And she is with Fabricius. And speaks with him about marriage. Aside. Now is the time to avenge myself. 
cavalier. It isn't fitting for one to laugh at the weaknesses of another when one has a heart as easily broken as yours. To the Marquis. Do you know what he is talking about? Friend, I don't know anything at all. I'm talking about you, who under the pretext of not being able to endure women have attempted to steal Mirandolina's heart from me, which was already my conquest. To the Marquis. I? I'm not talking. Turn to me and answer me. Aren't you ashamed of having acted so basely? I am ashamed to listen to you without telling you that you lie. You give me the lie? Aside. The matter is getting worse. To the Marquis. On what basis can you say? The Count doesn't know what he is saying. But I don't want to get mixed up in it. You are a liar. I'm going away. Stay. Holds him by force. You'll pay me for this. Yes, yes, I'll pay you. To the Marquis. Give me your sword. Oh, come, calm yourselves, both of you. Dear Count, what difference does it make to you if the Cavalier does love Mirandolina? I love her? It is not true. He lies that says it. Lies? The lie isn't any of mine. I am not the one that says it. Who then? I say it, and I maintain it, and I'm not afraid of you. To the Marquis. Give me that sword. No, I say. You are my enemy too. I am the friend of all. These actions are unworthy. I swear to heaven. He takes the sword from the Marquis, but it remains fixed, and he pulls the scabbard out of the belt. Don't be wanting in respect. To the Marquis. If you consider yourself insulted, I'll give you satisfaction, too. Come, you are too excited. To himself. I don't like this. I wish satisfaction. I'll give it to you. He tries to draw away the scabbard and cannot. That sword doesn't suit you. Curses. He tries hard to draw it out. Cavalier, you aren't accomplishing anything at all. I haven't any more patience. See? Draws out the sword and sees that the blade is broken off. What's this? You have ruined my sword. Where's the rest? There isn't anything there in the scabbard. Yes, that's so. I ruined it in my last duel. I didn't remember it. To the Count. Let me get a sword. I swear by heaven you shan't escape from my clutches. What? Flee? I am not afraid to face you, even with this bit of blade. It's a Spanish blade. It knows no fear. Not so much bravado, Sir Boaster. Yes, with this blade. He rushes upon the Count. Back! He puts himself on guard. Enter Mirandolina and Fabricius. Stop! Stop, gentlemen! Stop, gentlemen, stop! Aside. Oh, curses. Poor me, with swords. Do you see? For your sake. For my sake. See the cavalier? He is in love with you. I in love? It isn't true, you lie. The cavalier in love with me? Oh no, Count, you are mistaken. I can assure you that you are mistaken. And you have an understanding as well. It's known and evident. What's known? What's evident? I say, when it is so, it's known. When it isn't so, it's not evident. The cavalier in love with me. He denies it, and denying it in my presence he mortifies, humiliates me, and makes me recognize his strength and my weakness. I confess the truth. If I had succeeded in making him fall in love with me, I would think I had done the greatest act of prowess in the world. A man who cannot bear the sight of women, who despises them, who has a poor idea of them, I cannot hope to make him love me. My good sirs, I am a woman who is frank and sincere. When I ought to speak, I speak, and I can't conceal the truth. I tried to make the cavalier fall in love with me but all to no purpose. Isn't it true, sir? I have done my best, but I have accomplished nothing. Aside. Ah, I can't speak. To Mirandolina. Do you see? He is perplexed. To Mirandolina. He hasn't the courage to say no. To the Marquis. You don't know what you are talking about. Oh, the Cavalier isn't in love. He knows woman's wiles. He knows woman's roguishness. He doesn't believe everything they say. He doesn't put any confidence in tears. He even laughs when they faint. Then women's tears are false, and they're fainting but pretense? What? Don't you know that? Or are you pretending not to know? I swear by heaven, such deceit deserves a dagger in the heart. Cavalier, don't get angry, or these gentlemen will say that you're really in love. Yes, he is. He can't hide it. It's perfectly evident. To the Marquis. No, I am not. It is always with me that he's angry. No, sir, he is not in love. I say it, I maintain it, and I am ready to prove it. Aside. I cannot stand any more. Count, another time you will find me provided with a sword. Throws away the broken half of the Marquis's sword. See here! 
The hilt costs money. He takes it from the ground. Stop, Cavalier, your reputation is at stake. These gentlemen believe you are in love. They must be undeceived. There isn't any need of it. Oh, yes, sir. Stay a moment. Aside. What does that woman intend to do? Sirs, the surest sign of love is jealousy, and the man who isn't jealous isn't in love. If the Cavalier loved me, he couldn't bear that I should be another's. But he will bear it, and you shall see. To whom does this refer? He for whom my father destined for me. To Mirandolina. Perhaps you're speaking of me? Yes, dear Fabricius, and I wish, in the presence of these gentlemen, to give my hand to you in token of betrothal. Aside. Alas, with that fellow, I can't bear it. Aside. If she marries Fabricius, she doesn't love the Cavalier. Yes, marry, and I promise you a hundred pounds. Mirandolina! An egg to-day is better than a hen to-morrow. Marry now, and I'll give you six pounds. Thanks, sirs. I don't need a dowry. I am a poor woman without charm, without vivacity, incapable of making persons of consideration love me. But Fabricius wishes me well, and therefore I'll marry him in the presence of you all. Yes, curse you. Marry whom you will. I know you deceived me. I know you are exulting within yourself at having humiliated me, and I see that you wish to put my tolerance to the test. You deserve to be paid for your deception with a dagger in your heart. You deserve to have your heart torn out, and held up as an example of feminine flatterers, of feminine deceivers, but that would be to humiliate myself twice over. I flee from your eyes. I curse your flattery, your tears, your deceit. You have made me see what baleful power your sex has made over us, and you have taught me to my cost that it isn't enough to despise it. We men must flee from it. Exit the Cavalier. Say now that he isn't in love. If he gives me the lie again, on the word of a gentleman, I challenge him. Hush, gentlemen, hush. He has gone away, and if he doesn't return, and if the matter passes over this way, I can say I'm lucky. I have succeeded only too well in making him fall in love with me, and I am thus placed in a precarious condition. I don't want to know anything more of him. Fabricius, come here, dear. Give me your hand. Your hand? Not so fast, madam. You find pleasure in making people fall in love with you this way, and you expect me to want to marry you? Oh, come, fool. It was a joke. A whim. A little bit of pique. I was a girl. I had no one to alter my ways. When I am married, I know what I'll do. What? Enter the Cavalier's servant. Madame, before leaving I have come to pay my respects. Are you going away? Yes, my master has gone to the stagecoach office. He's making them harness up. He's waiting for me with the things, and we are going to Leghorn. Pardon me if I have ever done you— I haven't time to stay. Thank you, and au revoir. Exit the servant. Thank heavens he is gone. I have some remorse yet. Certainly he left with little satisfaction. I'll never try any more of these jokes. Mirandolina, married or single, I shall always be the same to you. Bank on my protection. Now I am married, gentlemen. I don't need protectors. I don't need lovers. I don't need gifts. Up to this time I have been amusing myself. I have done wrong, and I have taken too many risks. But I shan't do it any more. This is my husband. But, madam, not so fast. Why slow? What is it? What difficulty is there? Come now, give me that hand. I would like to make our agreements first. What agreement? The agreement is this. Either give me your hand or go home. I will give my hand. But then— But then, dear, everything will be yours. Don't hesitate. I shall always love you. You will always be my soul. Gives her his hand. Here, dear, I can't resist any more. Aside. Then this is done. Mirandolina, you are a fine woman. You have the power of leading men where you will. Your manner puts us under infinite obligations to you. If it is true that I can hope for favours from you, I ask for one last one. Then pray say it. Speak. Aside. Whatever will she ask for now? I beg you as a favour to change your lodgings. Aside. Fine. Now I see she is well disposed toward me. Yes, yes, I understand, and I compliment you. I shall go, but wherever I am, be assured of my esteem. Tell me, did you lose a little gold flask? Yes, sir. Here it is. I found it, and I'm going to return it. I shall leave to please you. But in every place, pray, bank on my protection. These words will be dear to me in the bounds of decorum and honesty. Changing my state, I wish to change my way of life, and may you gentlemen profit by what you have seen, 
to the advantage and well-being of your hearts, and whenever you may find yourselves hesitating as to whether you ought to yield or give in, may you think of the tricks you have learned, and remember the mistress of the inn. End of Act 3 End of The Mistress of the Inn, La Locandiera, by Carlo Goldoni Translated by Merle Pearson